Okay, uh, Riverside High School students, this is a uh, continuation of the lecture on culture. Um, you have this PowerPoint, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of finish this off, um, um, if you will. Actually, this is this is our pickup point right here. Um, we were talking about different people from different parts of the world. Um, when you see images like this, uh, with women from the Middle East, for example, wearing burqas. It brings up very specific ideas, uh, very specific prejudices and stereotypes uh, that we hold about and against people from other parts of the world. Um, the Samba tribe from New Guinea, we talk about ethnocentrism, the idea that we think about other cultures and evaluate different cultures through our own cultural lens. This is a good example. Um, the Sambia tribe from New Guinea um, actually, there's a, there's a, cer a ceremony, or rather a rite of passage, where they, the older men, as you see here, ingest the semen of young boys. Um, and th it's a symbolic ritual. Now, when we look at this, or think about this activity with our own culture, with our own cultural lens, if you will, or with our own perspective, we are probably disgusted by this. Uh, we actually put adult males in prison for engaging in sexual relationships with young boys. Um, within this society in New Guinea, it's not really, this is not really seen as a sexual um, experience, but more of a symbolic ritual. So we would have trouble, and myself included, would have trouble thinking about this and thinking that this would be okay, because we're not raised to believe that this is an okay thing to happen between a grown man and a grown, between a grown man and a young boy. So, and it's, again, it's tough to step outside of our own culture to objectively evaluate a different culture. Now, culture shock. This is the disorientation that people feel when they come into contact with different cultures. Um, I remember the first time I traveled from West Virginia to New York City. I was a junior in high school, and I remember stepping off the school bus, and there was so much activity. There was all kinds of stimulation. There were a lot of cars, buildings. A taxi cab driver literally ran me down. And I was on the sidewalk. I mean, he almost ran over top of me. Uh, and that was very disorienting for me. I was not used to that. Uh, when I went to Russia, uh, they warned us when, the, when we went over there that children would follow us around and pull on our clothes and just basically beg and demand at times for, uh, money or food. Um, and we weren't quite used to that. Um, that doesn't really happen here in the United States. Uh, but it was very, it was very disorienting. Uh, the idea of men kissing each other in Europe as a greeting. Um, guys, you know, men within our culture generally offer a handshake or a fist pump. We're not generally giving kisses on the cheek. Um, so that could be seen as being disorienting. Uh, when I was in Moscow, 9 and 10 year old children would drink liquor right out of, right out of the bottle. Like we would drink, you know, uh, an energy drink or a soda or a Red Bull or something like that. So again, things that are normative or normal in different parts of the world or different parts of the country may or may not be so here. And it can be disorienting. So there's an image of young children begging and, and literally sticking their hands out for anything that they can get. Uh, again, young children in Moscow drinking liquor. They didn't even bother with the paper bag. And then, of course, men greeting each other with a kiss. Generally, we're not used to seeing that. Uh, something else that can represent culture shock. I don't know if anyone's ever been to a nude beach, but I thought that slide was kind of funny. Um, I had a, a student some years ago at State. He served our country, and he traveled all over the world by virtue of being in the service. Um, and he was, was talking about being in Amsterdam and how difficult it was for him to process the fact that prostitution was legal. Uh, in parts of Amsterdam, and this this image shows you. Um, this is the most G-rated image I could find here, appropriate for classroom discussion. But but literally, men would walk by like you're shopping for something. Literally, window shopping. You find the girl that you like, and you actually pay for services if you catch my drift. Um, and he told me also that you can actually get a receipt, <laughs> a literally a, a literal receipt uh, after you. Uh, after you pay for services, if you will. So that could be very disorienting. It doesn't just happen from one country to the next. It can also happen within your own country or state. Um, if you travel outside of the state of West Virginia, you can experience culture shock. 
I even, you know, if you go from one county to the next, I remember my first trip from Lincoln County to Charleston. It was like, you know, a big change. Uh, traveling to Mardi Gras in New Orleans. Uh, illegal immigrants in the southwestern part of the United States can experience culture shock when they come over, um, when they come from Mexico into the United States. And if we were in class, I would ask you to think of a time when maybe you experienced culture shock. So that's something that you can contemplate. Um, you don't have to write that down or anything. Um, the next thing that I want to talk about, taboo. Taboos are behaviors within a given culture that are considered to be completely and wholly unacceptable. Um, and again, what is considered taboo in one country or one area may or may not be considered taboo in a different part of the world or a different country, etc. Um, and within our culture, examples of taboos include having sex with your parents. Uh, that's a disgusting thought for, for us to even entertain. Murder, eating human flesh. These are taboo behaviors. Um, making fun of your sociology teacher, well, you know, hey, kind of kidding about that, but you know, you get the idea there. Now, when we talk about culture, we have to talk about society and what a society means. Um, a society refers to, I know that slide's a little dark, so I'll read it, refers to people who interact with one another within a defined territory and share a culture. So anywhere you go, like American society, uh, Japanese society. And within culture I and mean, within societies, you have subcultures and countercultures. And I want to make the distinction between the two. Um, a subculture isn't something that's negative necessarily. Okay, Very simply, a subculture refers to cultural patterns that set apart some segment of the society's population. Um, you guys... You know, you're high school students, so you represent the subculture of high school students in this country. Uh, those of you who are athletes, you are part of the of that subculture, high school athletes. Um, if you work, if you have jobs, if you work in the fast food industry, you are part of that subculture of fast food industry employees, police officers, physicians, tattoo artists, reality TV stars, uh, hair bands from the 1980s. Uh, Nikki Six, a member of the the rock band Motley Crue, Kat Von D, maybe you've heard of these people, would be members of the tattoo subculture. Uh, bodybuilders would be a member of that subculture. Again, subcultures refer to groups of people that 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 share something. They have something in common, and they're set apart from the rest of society by what they have in common. And of course, my favorite. Again, hair bands from the 80s. Your parents probably would know these groups. Maybe not you guys so much. But they have some things in common that set them apart. Big hair and makeup. Now, conversely, a counterculture, we're talking about cultural patterns that strongly oppose those widely accepted within a society. So we're, we're still talking about cultural patterns that set people apart, but these are more negatively connotated. Uh, these groups of people endorse norms and values and beliefs that go against mainstream society. So some examples would be Satan worshippers, Hell's Angels, the Mafia, historically feminists, uh, the Klan. The Mafia. And actually before 1920 when women were given the right to vote in this country they were considered to be part of a counterculture because at that time before 1920 most people including most women didn't believe that women should have the right to vote. Uh, that seems seems incredible to think, but that's really um, really the truth. And of course, the Klan. To give you an idea, I'm going to use the Mafia as my example here, and I'll, I'll move on quickly. Um, I was working at Mount Olive as a prison psychologist, which I still do, and I had an inmate who was a member of the Mafia, and real short little guy, and he was telling me a story about how he got into trouble and what brought him to prison. He, he, he essentially was a hitman, and he had was responsible for you know, murdering several people. He had been, been paid to do so by members of the Mafia. And I asked him if he felt guilty about it, or if he had any reservations about doing this stuff. And he just kind of smiled and said, well, no, it was just a job like you're doing, Mr. Dean, which was really interesting to me. He had endorsed values and norms that definitely went against mainstream society. So he was a member of this counterculture of the Mafia. What got him in trouble was he had been paid to video a murder of someone. Uh, literally, 
let wild animals eat this guy to death. He tied this guy up, poured meat powder on him, and let wild animals eat him. Videotaped it and sent it back to the guy who paid for this hit, if you will. The problem was the video was was uh, was captured by by law enforcement, and the guy who videoed it, the hitman in prison, caught himself in the video a little bit, so he was identified as being the person who did this. That's a true story, but he had no remorse about it. Now we live in a pluralistic society, a society of many cultures. We are a true melting pot. Um, we may be the most culturally diverse country in the world. Uh, in Queens, New York alone, there are approximately 180 different cultures represented just within that borough in New York. So that gives you an idea. Uh, most societies are pluralistic, some more so than others. Now, don't really worry about these too much at this point. We're going to talk some more about these terms um, as we go. So just kind of letting you know that. But we'll talk about norms, sanctions, values, beliefs, um, ideal versus real culture, mores, folkways. Uh, we've already talked about some of these, but uh, we'll, we'll discuss these probably in the next video clip, just so you know. Okay, and we'll go ahead and call that the end here of this part.